And this championship game is underway. Bahia back to Sorokin in his own zone. The Canadian team in this game, as we said, must play aggressively, but they must try and avoid that penalty box because the Soviets have an outstanding power play. Dumped out of the zone by Team Canada. Potilnish for checking for the Soviet squad. Now Team Canada starts out, led by Chris Joseph. Pass on the right side, too far for Curry. He chases it down back to the net. Curry is there as well. Rob Brown. Back to the point to Joseph, into Flurry, back to Rob Brown. Both Flurry and Rob Brown have scored three goals in the tournament. Joseph fakes the shot, but Flurry scores! Very patient, excellent goal right along the ice. That's the way you intimidate, Phil. You intimidate when you capitalize on your power play. They get that second power play, they held the puck. They were very, very patient. Take a look over to Fleury and he lets it go. He won times it as we go. Right along the ice and it's one nothing Canada. Important goal for us. Take a look at it again. Directly right along the ice. And as a matter of fact, if it doesn't run Fleury, his fourth of the tournament from Chris Joseph at 8-12. Canada leading this gold medal game by a score of one nothing. 9.45, the time left in, or gone in this uh, opening period. In back of the net, Rob DeMaio lost control of it. The Soviets come back. They are led by Sidorov. Sidorov into the center ice area. He dumps it in, and the Soviets make a line change. Again, the clock here in the Soviet Union counts up to 20 seconds, 20 minutes. Here's the shot of the floor by Linda as he came. Letting that shot go, and Canada leads it 2-0. And very effectively set up by Hoggett. Hoggett brought the puck up, brought it to center ice, read the play, Linden, and now you see it here, you'll take a look. We talk about the man without the puck. That's the big thing. We always are looking. Now watch Hoggett. He draws the man and then flips him over. A nice little flip. Linden goes in and picks the upper corner. It's 2 nothing. Say good night. Big man, as we say there, and then slipped it over. Great play, great goal. Zalapukin of the Soviet Union trying to... Graves along the boards is bumped. The puck comes loose. Mogilny and across the line. Look at the moves this fella has. He lost control of the puck and a stick at the same time. All the NHL scouts here are certainly drooling over McGilney, but uh, don't think he's going to be picked by anybody in June. Back to the point, and the Soviet defenseman, Kreboshekha, had moved out of position and couldn't keep it in. Joseph fires it in, stopped back of the net. The Soviets try and come out on the right side. And Polenkov gets it goes to Chiborev. Chiborev going for the net. And it's knocked off his stick. He gets it again. A backhand shot right in front of Chris Joseph. Dex, the Soviet player, Kostikin. And this is going to produce a penalty. Well, I have to see what he's going to call here and what the real call on the penalty is. Because I thought he called him for high sticking when he came across on the top. And we'll have to see that on the picture again. But I'll tell you something. We, they have got a little bit of momentum here. We talk about momentum change. We talked about earlier that we were concerned about the... We're going to see it here as he comes across. He does have the stick up. The referee's on it. Now, this is an important penalty for us to kill off. You can be sure of that because the Soviets have a little momentum here. They feel very confident emotionally, which is very important in a game. Chris Joseph for high sticking at 6.38. We talked about the Soviet coach getting involved. We just saw him giving direction to his team. He really does get involved in the game. And unlike Canadian coaches, he works from the front of the bench. Back to the line. Catlips with a blast that went over top of the net. In the corner. Dorfiev back to the line to Catlips. The tallest, the tallest will be in power. We talked about momentum. We're going to get a look now. They feed it. They give and go. And now he takes it to the middle. We missed the poke check. And it's a great shot to Thomas right inside the post. 
Nenat's picking the net. So you can be sure of that. That's what we say when we say the puck has eyes. Now take a look. He makes the move here. We miss him. And now he goes to the middle and watch the inside of the post. And that had something on it. I mean, that wasn't lobbed into the net, let me tell you that. It's a 2-1 hockey game, and we've got ourselves a nail biter. Time remaining in the penalty to the Talnish. We're at 11.38 into the second period. Canada in front by a score of one. It was 2-0 Canada after 20 minutes. Back to the line, Mark Lanyell. He gets the return pass, a shot. Right on the score! Well, what a time to take the steam, and what a way to make your power play. You can intimidate, as we said earlier, Don. You can intimidate with your power play, because then they're afraid to take penalties, and then they therefore it takes them off their game. They don't be so aggressive. Again, it was a simple old rule. Watch, we get possession of the puck right over there. The forward goes over to him. Now he takes it to the middle and lets a long, low drive. And right underneath him over the line, it's 3-1. It might not be pretty, but the score's still 3-1. We can look again. Now watch him take the puck, move to the middle. That forward's away out of position, drills it low, and the goalie doesn't make the save. It's 3-1. Get the puck on the net, the old story. Well, all the folks who follow the Oshawa Generals of the Ontario Hockey League can celebrate on that one as Mark Lanyell let that blast go from the point. Here come the Soviets now. A shot, a high blast. That bounced off the shoulder of Jimmy Wade. Another shot from the point, and that just goes wide. Krebosheka let that shot go. The, Sovi the Soviets get it again. Christian. A long drive. To slip past him. I'm not sure if they, when he reacted, I think he knocked the puck in the net. You'll notice it's another low shot that we talked about. There's the save. Yes, he knocks it in with his arm. Looking for the puck, and those are, but they all count, don't they? We'll take a look. It's a low shot from outside. He's really on the play. The puck bounces. Now he comes down. He looks for it. It's not over the line. He pushes it in with his arm. <laughs> so it's 3-2 as the puck is dumped into the Soviet zone. Curry is bumped back at the net. Dorothy playing it up along the boards. Flurry gets there first. For commercials here like we do. <laughs> Face off in the Canadian zone. Mark Laniel for Joe Sackick. He gets it ahead to Warren Bay, but he can't get out of the zone. The Soviets applying pressure looking for that tying goal jimmy wade's got it christich was driving for the net and jimmy wade managed to stop him there's enough people in front there to to give him three yards and a second down you'll see when there's a lot of people around watch him break to the net on his backhand and jimmy stays right with him right on top of him there and that's a stoppage of play we're talking about the soviets when they fit their highlights in and and we go to commercials and uh, they don't. I've been at some hockey games where they'd be showing a lot of highlights. I mean, uh, <laughs> but the problem is if there's no highlights. You know, there have been some games that you've covered and I've been involved in in our teams, there's not enough highlights to give. So it'd be pretty long pauses. 2.39, the time gone by here in the third period. McBean loses it. Fedorov sets it up, back to the line. Here's a shot just wide. Back of the net. Looked as though McGilney had flipped it in, but Jimmy Waite just managed to steer it past the corner. Well, I'll tell you, there'll be some talking to yourself there. That, that Soviet team saying right now, what do we have to do to put the puck in the net? Take a look here, he comes around. But it stopped, it goes to some credit to knock that puck out, but look at the open net here, and Jimmy Waite comes across. Give Jimmy Waite credit. We've got to do something now to change this momentum. Make no mistake of that, you know, and it's a big part of any team sport game. And they've got some emotion. Leave is the greatest maybe ever. He read that play immediately as soon as he saw he won the faceoff. He was gonzo, magonzo, and bango. We win the Canada Cup with that play. Faceoff in the Canadian zone again. The puck goes into the corner. Graves goes in there with the Soviet player. It comes up along the boards, but not out. A blast from the point, knocked down in front. And Canada's Mark Recchi chips it off the glass into the neutral zone. Flurry with it to the net. Oh, it's wide. Nine seconds remaining in the game. There's no Five, question. Four, Canada is going to win. 